Hello everyone, welcome to the Nerd Herd Comic Book Club. That's right, we're a comic book club where we go ahead and talk about an arc, a volume or a story that either ourselves or you as the viewers have chosen. If you're new here, welcome. Take a seat, have a drink, get involved. It's going to be an hour of fun. And if you're a seasoned viewer, welcome back. It's nice to see you. I hope you're doing well. My name is Scott. I'm from the YouTube channel Scott Shelf, and I'm joined by my co-host today. We've got Philip from Phil's Nerdyverse. Howdy ho. And we've got Shane from Dawn of Comics. Ahoy hoy. So you will have noticed that we've got an empty space up here. Usually it's filled with Dean, but Dean has decided to leave the nerdhood and all sort of social media. We respect his decision wholly. Uh, and uh, we, I think, I think, boys, I can talk on your behalf and the viewer's behalf that, Dean, we love you, we miss you, and we hope that whatever you're doing, you're doing well. Absolutely. Yes. You may have noticed the, the bombardment of videos and images on Instagram and Facebook telling you this week what we're going to be reading uh but and also if you haven't seen the video title either we today are going to be reviewing sandman volume one preludes and nocturnes and this has been written by neil gaiman and the artistry here was done by sam keith if you decide at the end of this uh if you decide at the end of this video um, that you like the sound of the book and you want to go ahead and take a look at it and buy it, get the physical copy, go to the description in this video and you will see an Amazon link. Uh, the Nerdhood is now affiliated with Amazon, so anything you buy through our link, the Nerdhood will get some money from it. And we have decided to put all of that money towards you guys by buying, you know, like a prize for the for the giveaway for the viewer's choice. There we go. So nice of us. Yeah, <laughs> lovely. Okay, shall we see who's here? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so who we've got joining us so far? So we got the Fuzzy Dunlop, Evening Pimps and Players, even YouTubers everywhere. All the YouTubers. We got the Funky Gibbons, Liam's here, uh, Heidi Ho, uh, Triple G. Now then, uh, this month in movies, even all, hope you're all well. Uh, Coraline and Adam, hey, hey, ho, haven't finished this one yet, so we'll watch this one later. Have a great show. Thank you very much. Uh, looking forward to seeing what you think in the comments. Uh, Joblot Comics is here. Good evening, all. Nice to see you. Comics versus the world. Evening, gents. Really sorry, I can't stay for this one, as it's one of my favorites, uh, but I'll watch the replay tomorrow and leave my score. Have a good one. Uh, we've also got This Week in Metropolis. Evening, gents. James is here with us. Uh, thank you. Um, he, uh, James and K what was his name? Come with K Matt, Matt not K. <laughs> James and Matt. <laughs> they interviewed uh, Phil and Shane uh, quite recently, and, and their video was uh, on today and on and on the podcast as well. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, we've also got Echidna, hello, and we've also got Bethany. Hey, yeah, <laughs> there we go. I think that is everyone so far. Um, so I chose the book for this week, Salman Volume 1. So I guess that's up to me to do the synopsis. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not so the rules. Uh, so <laughs> Sandman Volume 1 pretty much uh, takes place. Um, it starts off with a dark cult accidentally summoning Dream instead of death. And they, they um, uh, imprison him and they take these three artifacts that held all his power and kind of distribute them throughout the world pretty much over a 70 year period um this this volume pretty much shows uh morpheus the dream's real name uh his kind of quest on regaining these three items you know whilst meeting plenty of other characters and going through some very weird dreamscapes um and stuff like that so he, he gets he gets his first two items quite easily he meets constantine he goes to hell and uh then he finally has a final struggle to get his last art artifact from dr d or dr destiny uh and ultimately he gets all of his items back and then uh he has all of his power and then it kind of you know has a nice epilogue to the end then but that's pretty much it nailed it Great, thank you very much. Um, I think I've spoken enough now. Uh, Phil, do you want to take us off? Yeah, um, th this book was really bizarre, absolutely bizarre. And to be honest, um, and I know 
comic bound as a huge fan and i felt bad that i was going to slate this book but the book saved itself and we'll get into, we'll get into that in terms of like the art like there's some normal comic book art and comic book panels and then you have some completely outrageous kind of i don't even know how to describe it it's like chalk and cheese you have some really nice stuff and then some not so nice stuff in the art and it was just completely bizarre the whole story was bizarre so what do you mean by not nice stuff well if you want to show my panel you'll 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 see like <laughs> like like uh is it um lucifer's palace or whatever it was and it's just yeah. like it's just outrageous like i don't understand like the level of detail in it um like it's gory and it's weird it has all the demons and stuff and has all these kind of like I don't know. It was just that was bizarre, and then even when it goes like the Cain and Abel stuff, there's it's gory, but it's also normal at some places as well. It was just quite odd, quite an odd book. But like I say, at the start, it, I I kind of lost my way, but then like I kind of reined it in towards the end. I could see it itself definitely. Right. Yeah. Shame. Um, I love the art. It made me very happy. Um, as soon as I opened it, I was like, "Yep, yeah, this is for me." And then it went really crazy. Like it was like, obviously, it's weird dreams. So the this art fit perfectly yeah. for that. Like you couldn't do a nice, clean, crisp no design for this book. You can't it have to... like, yeah, you can't no. have like Dan Mora doing this. Oh gosh, no, 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 no! <laughs> it has to be gritty and dirty. And it was, it was. I yeah, very, very happy with the art in this book. Yeah, but do you not think it did? It, it did different. Like there was some normal looking stuff as well throughout. Like it changed I, almost. I did notice in, in when they went to hell, and they had that full page of just a load of demons. It was literally just a page of demons. There was no text or anything. I did think that looked a little bit too clean for this book. Mm -hmm. It was a weird feeling I had. I was like, the colors yeah. are too clean. No the art. Too, yeah, I just thought that seemed a little bit out of place. Just not. It wasn't bad. It was just too clean but that's the only time i really noticed a massive shift in the art yeah i mean it's like like the for me the most noticeable change in the art was when the artists changed <laughs> um did you know about this did you um so for the final issue no so it was um after issue five so uh, on, on the 24 hours issue so the so the original artist was sam keith and and the the inker was Mike Dringenberg, but then um, what was it? I read at the end of the book. Uh, it was like a little little thing, like why Sam left, and he, he kind of mentioned that he felt like he was um, playing with the wrong band. He felt like he was Jimi Hendrix playing with the Beatles. That's what he said, mm -hmm. and um, so he kind of left at issue five, and then Mike Dringenberg took took uh, charge of the. The drawing, and then they brought in, uh, uh, was it Mike Jones? No, someone Jones the uh, third in for coloring. So, so the art actually just did actually just drastically change from issue six onwards. But I think the the thing that I was I loved most about Sam Keith stuff, like the first five issues, was was the the panels like the borders you had around some of the panels were like absolutely fantastic it was like he was literally trying to frame some of the panels that he had drawn yeah um, i didn't i honestly i didn't notice the difference until the final issue mm. okay um yeah. i don't know what happened there i don't know <laughs> if my brain must have just like been an auto drive <laughs> but when yeah. i started the final issue i was like oh this is a completely different artist it feels completely different yeah. To be fair, like I agree with Shane, the last day she felt like it was a completely different artist. So obviously the artist, because like they were drawing that guy, what was his name, Doctor D, who yeah. just looked creepy. And to be fair, it didn't have a lot of detail on him. Like he was just no. this kind of looking grey, wrinkly looking golem looking character, you know. So there's not much to do with that. So you can't, you don't have to change that drastically, I suppose. No, really, yeah. um, and even with Morpheus or the Dream, like. He, his design's fairly straightforward as well. Yeah, true. But I did notice a difference in the art. Sam Keith's art probably was a bit dirtier and grittier. I'm not a huge fan of Sam Keith. Like he drew like the Max series and stuff. I wasn't a huge fan of how he draws Batman, for example. But for this, like it's it did suit the kind of story and the theme of the book. But the change yeah. didn't really affect me until like the last issue as well. 
Yeah. Okay. Let's say hi to a few more people. We got Tottenham Gaming in. Hello. How you doing? Uh, Highland G. Hi everyone. And uh, Albert Longford. Thanks for joining. Um, Liam has also said something. So he said, uh, for the most part, I really enjoyed the art, but there were moments where it wasn't up to the same standard. Um, I did. I, I kind of felt that. I kind of, um, yeah, I kind of uh, noticed. You know, it dips. But I think. Is that was that on purpose? Was it because of the whole, you know, the dreams were just a bit mental and just some scenes weren't supposed to be as like I keep using the word coherent, but how, <laughs> I can't. Well, what's the visual word for co coherent? But you know what I mean. Hopefully, I I think what you're what you're saying, like I I, I agree because like there was some stuff like the hell stuff was really detailed and gory and like nasty looking but then you had stuff like the john constantine issue which was great by the way like the yeah, art yeah. not just like, like a normal comic book you mm -hmm. know uh there wasn't anything in it that would just go like that's that's mental it was just a normal comic book style art um so yeah there, it did dip up and down but it wasn't bad it was all it was all good and some was better than others but yeah yeah, and uh, Echidna's come in as well. He's talked about the covers, I think. Uh, I read Sandman about 20 years ago, and the interior art was a huge disappointment compared to uh, Dave McKean's covers. The covers were stunning. Um, it's grown on me a lot since then, but it still doesn't live up to the amazing covers. So, See, like, uh, I'm not sure I agree. I agree that the covers are amazing, yeah. but... Uh, are they? Are they, though? I wasn't, I wasn't oh, disappointed. Okay. With the you could interior. frame any one of those covers, Phil. Come on now. Like, but the thing about the covers is the thing, right? So I agree. They do obviously look good for like a piece of art as such. They obviously don't fit in with the book. They don't look mm -hmm. at all like the book. But I know you, you don't judge a book by its cover. But if I seen that cover on the shelf, not knowing what this book is, I wouldn't pick it up. No. You know I mean? yeah. yeah. I think I've never, ever been interested in reading this book. Never. Uh, if it wasn't for Scott picking this, I, I still wouldn't read it. Um, I would never have read it, so I'm, I'm glad I did. But it's mm. never ever interested me. The so. reason the reason I did pick it was because, um, well, because it's Neil Gaiman for one. Like the first ever thing I ever read of his was American Gods, and then I've also read uh, Neverwhere. So basically, and I love them both. And basically, anything that has the words Neil Gaiman on them. <laughs> I'm like, yes, let's like, I want a bit of that, you know, and, and the fact that it's in comic form and it's such like a highly acclaimed series as well. is just, it's just amazing. And, you know, and to go with the fact that it's a highly acclaimed series, Albert Longford has asked if anyone's listened to the, to the audiobook, And I actually listened to that last weekend. I listened to the whole thing and it is word for word, the same as the comic, which for me, like, was awesome, um, you know, so because I listened to it first and then read it later, I had all the voices in my head, um, you know, and a lot of the characters, the way they were described in the audiobook as well was kind of, um, you know, similar to what was in the comic as well, which I was really happy with. Cool. I'll check that out. I do yeah, like a good right. audio podcast of yeah. a book. Uh, it was so successful, um, they're now doing a second one. Who, who, narrates, who narrates the audiobook? Neil Gaiman. Himself? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, any he audiobooks with Neil Gaiman, he narrates them. Oh, of course. Uh, and and Morpheus is played by James McAvoy. Oh, interesting. Yeah. There's I some big names in that. Big names in that as well. Uh, let's say hi to Ali as well. Hi, thanks for joining. Um, and then Liam has also said it wasn't the on purpose weirdness for me. There was a panel early on issue one, I think, and it was while Dream was still captured, faking his death, and one of the guards' faces in the panel was so bad. Do you know I want to actually touch on as well before we go into yeah. our pages about the art because I don't think any of us picked it or could be wrong but the bit where uh, maybe I am wrong maybe someone's picked it but the part where like he traveled from like through like America through people's dreams yeah I thought that was really cool and the, the so way cool. it was done it was just, like I was picturing if it, was, if it was like a movie like what it would look like in a movie scenario and I just thought yeah. it was pretty cool the way he done that yeah okay so sh should we move on to the pages Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Shane, we'll go with yours first, shall we? Okay. <laughs> okay, so I picked oh, a different... Man. Yeah, I picked a different page first, okay, because obviously this was in the final issue. So I picked a, a different page. It was a fun page, and it was my page for over, like, 150 pages. I hadn't found a better page. And then this page just broke my heart. Like, this, this got me, this page. Um, I know it's Death just doing her job, but it's the nonchalantness of her, you know, like she just shows up and it's just, it's just a day. But then 
when the baby speaks to her and says, is that all I get? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. oh, my God, I've got goosebumps right now. Um, yeah, this page got me and it just, it, it broke me. Um, this was, I wasn't expecting it. So, it, yeah. It was I, heartbreaking. I agree with Shane. You know, the way, the way death just went about her business, like talking to her brother, like just have a normal conversation and just, she wasn't like picking people purposely that that they're, they've ended their time had come and even the fact that they, they they met the first man and he he managed to say a prayer or something say goodbye and then she just moved on from one to the other and when it came to this scene like i the first panel i actually thought it was gonna be the mum it's like oh they're gonna leave the baby on its own like the mum's gonna drop dead or something and then like what shane says like to pick the baby up and the baby talks is this all i get it's like <laughs> what why why are you doing this like you know oh oh god yeah, yeah, hurts. Yeah, yeah. Take it off now, Scott. It's finished. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, yeah, it's a very moving page, very impactful page. But I think you know, the death as a character is so nice. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you know, in all of these other depictions of death in other stories and films and whatever, death is like this grumpy, dark, moody guy in a hooded thing, and this is like a woman in a vest, totally like open and just nice she's cool she's cool yeah right when she says to frederick she's like i'll see you soon yeah. <laughs> like, oh, no, don't say that. <laughs> and yeah. they even mentioned that i think in the narration the fact that death is this kind of thing that people avoid and don't want to don't like to see but then she just does it so nicely that everyone that obviously apart from the baby everyone who dies is goes with her willingly like without a fuss without a yeah. fight even was it yeah. franklin or is it frederick the, the the football he got knocked, he got knocked over. She's like, yeah. you come over here. You, you're gonna want to see this. Yeah, it's gonna look really at your dead body. It's gonna yeah. be fun. It's like, <sighs> yeah, so cool. Just another hello to the comic room. Hello, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, uh, Echidna has also said the is that all I get has stayed with him for twenty years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it will stay with me for twenty years, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. me too. Uh, Tom from This Month in Movies and Albert uh, also talking about the fact that Sandman is coming to Netflix soon uh, so that would be something very cool to look forward to as well. Um, no, not if you've seen the cast <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fair enough, okay uh, Phil So this is the bizarre like odd manic stuff I was kind of referring to, like just, just take a minute to look at this temple of, I mean Obviously, the first part of this page, you see this kind of woman with like six um, really saggy breasts. And it's just like, <laughs> it's just so odd. And she's also back to front. That's the first thing you see. And then you see the, the baby heads or the, like, the, the bald, I don't know what their babies are, just bald men at the bottom. It's almost like a Buddha type looking thing, isn't it? It's just, it's just so odd and creepy. And yeah, it's just, it adds to the atmosphere, of course, but just like, it's just so bizarre and i think this was sam keith's um art yeah this was yeah because he, yeah. he, he also drawn the you know morpheus's palace a few issues or the, the the previous issue didn't he and it was kind of similar with the whole you know with the, the red glass you've got there but yeah. it's like blue instead and they're all like symmetrical uh both of the palaces there as well but yeah it's i nearly picked this page it's just creepy and um, bizarre that needs to be talked about. That's it sets the tone yeah. like, of the book almost, especially that part in Hell, which was which was a great, um, oh, great issue. So yeah. good that uh, from the start when they're walking through the forest, the suicide forest. Oh, oh my See, god! Just a, just right there. It this is like, the thing with this book. That? It's so deep. Even the fact that that forest you're referring to, they said like so seventy years ago when it came to this forest, it wasn't a forest. It was like a, a I can't really call this a garden, but now it's a forest. Yeah, yeah. A grove, it's just kind of, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just kind of highlighting. Obviously, the suicide rate has increased so much in that yeah. seventy years. And this, this is 1989, so it would be an even bigger forest now, you know. And it's just really sad that kind of stuff. Yeah, but yeah. Um, Chocolate Comics going back to to Shane's pick. Death receives her own mini series eventually. They they did a two four issue runs. She was that popular. Ooh, maybe a future up. pick yeah. for the dead. Oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, and then we'll move on to to my pick. Then, uh, so yeah. this was uh, when um, uh, this was when Morpheus wanted to get his amulet back from the the what's his name the the Old demon. Mask. That had, yes, his mask. 
Oh yes, it was the mask. Yeah, sorry, not the amulet. Yeah, so he, he, they they were challenged, but the challenge was like this. It was called like the oldest game, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and uh, basically, they had to kind of one up each other, being like, "I am a wolf. I I'll do this. <laughs> then I am a hunter. I'll do this. I am a a, a a wasp that kills the horse, and I'll do this and stuff like that." And it was just so cool. And I remember because I listened to the audiobook first. This was my favorite scene in in the audiobook, like being so sort of visual scene in my head. I just absolutely loved it. And then when I saw it in the book, I was very pleased with how how they drew it. And I just thought it was just fantastic. You know, that lasts like, what, three pages long, that whole scene there. Um, and yeah, it was just so cool just seeing it kind of grow and get bigger and stuff like, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing fantastical about the art in this page. But for me, it just made me very happy just to know, you know, my favorite scene was done quite well. I, Did I anyone like else? Sorry, go on, Phil. No, you go first, Shane. I was just going to say, before they started that battle and like they went to, like it was like a club thing. Did anyone else think it was going to be like a stand-up comedian battle? <laughs> I got that vibe. Like He was on stage behind the microphone, and I was like, are they going to yeah. like tell jokes at each other? So this, is, this is the thing. <laughs> Initially, you think they're going to have like a battle or something or a fight or use magic against it. And then, you, 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 then they go on stage thinking, what's... What's going on here? What are they doing? And essentially, yeah. what they do is like play top trumps with each other. You know, it's yeah. just like it's just it was so weird, but it was so cool. And um, yeah, I, I genuinely like that that scene as well. And um, yeah, it was just so strange. I was expecting death, not just you know, I pick a yeah. wasp that kills your horse. I kill I pick I a spider that kills your wasp. It's like, <laughs> all right, thanks. But then like yeah. it starts off really simple, but then it finishes really like deep, doesn't it? It's like yeah. I am the anti life. And then and it's I, like, I, I am hope. hope. Yeah. yeah. Like, but that was drop. great. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, it was really I cool. Did, like, I did think you could top that, though. Like, you could, you can beat, you can crush hope. Like, he, he, he's a demon in hell. He knows how to crush yeah. people's hope. And he didn't, he couldn't come up with anything. It's like, weak, dude. Come I know. on. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what happened. And yeah, I loved it. So, so yeah. And that's that. that. What I did love is when he got his mask and Lucifer was like, well, you're not going to leave. We're just going to stop you. And he's like, and what if I take away people's dreams of heaven, bitch? And they're just like <laughs> parting of the Red Sea. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and everyone just, yeah, splits apart and that he just goes home. brilliant. Yeah. That was cool. He's um, just wicked. Yeah. Do you guys want to talk any more about the art? Um, Anything else you want to touch on? I think no, my art, my notes for the art are literally just positives. This literally just, yeah. I was, I loved it. So yeah, you know, I think the um, when I, when I think of the art, like I think of you know the earlier Sam Keith issues where you have like one page spreads, but the panels are all like wavy lines, and you know the art in them, and it's really like it's difficult on purpose to kind of see what's going on in these kind of panels, and yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie, when I first, I think, I think it was issue one, and that had the Cain and Abel stuff, didn't it? The, the two brothers. That, or no, it wasn't the brothers, it was the 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 old man, and then he and then his son, when they were kind of yeah. like, uh, rela not released, or captured uh, Morpheus, whatever it was. I didn't really know if I was going to like the art from the off. Yeah. Like the first few pages, I was like, oh, no, I'm going to read this whole book like this. And it did change from that slightly. It got more freaky and more bizarre, but I'm just glad I didn't stick to that kind of way at the very start. Didn't like the first few panels, first pages. Yeah. Um, this is this is a comment here from Chris off my shelves. It's relating to, to my page pick. So there's a story in the Mabinogion. The Mabinogion is a Welsh book um, full of like folklore stories. Um, so yeah, it was written in the 12th century and it has exactly the same as that, apparently. Um, that kind of game where it ends up uh, with someone turning into a, a grain to hide. Uh, and then turned into a chicken and gobbled him up. You used so, to hear yeah. so cultured. So cultured. <laughs> I haven't read it. I've got the book. I've not read it. So cultured-ish. I'm aware yeah. of it. Half um, cultured. Uh, and job lot, job lot as well. He says, uh, they say, uh, the artists change constantly through this title. I seem to remember a different art team on every arc. When reading it every month, it was annoying. Um, yeah. Like if if you were here earlier, um, job lot, uh, I, I mentioned that it went from Sam Keith to uh, what was his name, Mike. 
uh, Mike Dringenberg to um, from issue five to six. So that's where so Sam Keith stopped at issue five, and then Mike started at issue six. See the whole Sandman universe, I find quite intimidating because there's so much of it. Like there's the dreaming stuff, like its own kind of yeah. series, which is more modern. And then obviously, am I right? And Scott has has the Sandman universe and Lock and Key somehow combined yeah, or there's, something. There's a crossover, yeah. It's it's currently coming out now, yeah. That's just I just think the Sandman because obviously there's three big absolutes for one of the Sandman, and then you obviously have the the Death mini series that the job lot mentioned, and there's just so much of Sandman that's like yeah. forty. Like, oh, you but know, you know, like Marvel and DC, they're fine. Yeah, what's different? That's no. <laughs> this, this is this is deep, heavy, yeah. kind of dramatic and dark stuff. Like like reading this book, like. I'm actually looking forward to going back and reading some amazing Spider-Man. I could eat some fluff here, you know, something yeah. nice and fluffy and mind numbing yeah. because this was this yeah. was quite deep and heavy at times. Well, shall we move on to the writing then and talk yeah. about how deep and heavy it is? Sure. Shane, do you want to kick us off? Um, I think my the first thing I took from it, um, it's not so much like the writing as in this story. I really love how they brought it into the DC universe. Like, yeah. Because he was away for 70 years, obviously. But they managed to intertwine him into things that had happened. You know, Dr. Destiny was an established character. So mm. he did have the jewel that let him control dreams. So I thought that it was a great way to bring him into the universe in a natural way. And you wouldn't be going, oh, well, where's he been for the past 70 years? Where's he been captured? Yeah. Yeah. So I was really impressed with that. I Cool. Like, I... I don't know any of that side of things. So I think even from a, you know, just a standalone uh, perspective, I think I had no issues with following anything in there. You know, like I, I understood Dr. D and his motivations and the fact that Constantine was in there and, you know, he, he was there for the reasons he was there. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't have any issues feeling like I had missed stuff or needed to pre-read stuff to get into this. No. No, they did. He did it really, really well. Yeah, Phil, you're going to say something. I'm just glad. Like, obviously, they, they they brought in like Martian Manhunter, and they had John Constantine, and they had yeah. Scott Free, Mister Miracle. Like, they could have. Like, if they had brought Batman into this, they did refer to Batman, I think. But if they had brought Batman into this, it would have become silly. Yeah. Like, you're just yeah. trying to get the big hitter in the sell this book. So, like, I don't know how big Mister Miracle was at that time. He's even now he's not that big of a character really so it seems like they've kind of used small cameos of lesser known characters to kind of bring that into the dc universe and make it more relevant and stuff like i mean i thought scott free was a bit i actually thought he was quite cool in this book so so i don't know why it was only the first short few pages i thought john constantine was really good in this book yeah. i've never read um uh what's hellblazer. the book hellblazer before but i feel like even after this small cameo of his, I feel like I want to read some of his Hellblazer yeah. stuff. Yeah, now, I feel know. exactly the same. Yeah. Um, um, so you yeah. thought all that, all that was cool, and um, even that Hellblazer or that John Constantine issue. I can't remember the girl's name. The girl who uh, John had a had a Rachel? had passed. Yeah, that's the one. So she she had the, the sandbag, didn't she? The, the bag or the the pouch, and um, she was obviously in a state where she couldn't die. She was just in a dream state. And but she, essentially, without that pouch, he would just die. And obviously, he took the pouch back. That actually was quite heavy. The fact that John Constantine's like, Oh, I used to love Rachel, but she's one a bit bizarre, one a bit mental, and I haven't seen her in a long time. And she he discovers she's alive, but then he, she has to die because she is dying. The, the pouch yeah. is keeping her alive, type thing. Yeah. And um, but I like the way like he, he sprinkles like a bit of sand on, on her, and she dies happy by thinking yeah. of John Constantine. I thought, like, this yeah. is, there's a lot of things in this book, like it's quite nice. Yeah, yeah like I feel like you know Morpheus was a very just character. Like he was a very like anti-hero kind of thing, and he needed what needed yeah. to be. He did what needed to be done. At yeah. the end of the day, um, just to because because he, he's not a mortal, he's an endless, and mm. you know he just needed to keep the balance. And you know he didn't. You know, like like with death, you know she walks around just taking people's lives. That's part of what she is and part of her responsibilities and you know dream is just doing exactly the same it, even the fact that he didn't kill dr d or didn't you know he just put yeah, him back yeah. into arkham like he was but my thing with morpheus is i don't know if it's deliberate with a writer i don't know neil game is deliberately but i feel like you don't really know is he a 
good is he like a hero or a villain is he a good guy or a bad guy he's not really he can't really de- that's what I mean. he can't yeah. really determine where yeah. he kind of falls if you know what i mean he's just doing his yeah. thing like he has to keep the balance yeah. as you said and, yeah, and yeah. He's just so indifferent about everything because he wasn't even going to kill that um that woman he wasn't going to put her out of her misery he's just like well, yeah she'll die it's fine yeah. like she can't survive about the patch it was john that was like you can't leave her like this yeah. So he wasn't, he was quite happy to just take the sand and leave. So yeah. he doesn't, it's not that he doesn't care, I suppose. He's like you say, he's an endless, so there's no point in caring. Yeah. The, the thing that worried me about reading this book so Neil Gaiman, I think, was a novelist first before comics. And I, I think I read somewhere that he was inspired by Alan Moore and his comics and Watchmen and stuff. Now, Alan Moore is a very, very intelligent fella, and so was Neil Gaiman. And I was just worried that I would be too dumb to kind of read this book and there were there were times in the first early issues where i did feel like i'm not really i don't know if i was paying too much attention to the details that you don't really need because there's a lot goes on or it kind of the way he, he narrates the book there's just a lot there to take in but i mentioned before like in in, in, in private like issue eight reined it all in like it simplified everything for me like everything just seemed, seemed so complicated up to the certain point. And then issue eight was just like, they just described what happened from the start of the journey to the, to the end. And it just seemed so simple. I was thinking, what was I worried about? Why, like, why am I focusing too much on all these little details that they add to the story, but you don't need them for the story going forward as such, you know? Yeah. And, um, but yeah, I was worried about being too, too dumb for, for Neil Gaiman, but I'm not, I'm not quite that dumb yet. I'm still, I'm still in the game. Yeah. I'm still there. <laughs> yeah. Um, going backwards a little bit, uh, Job Lock Comics has uh, commented earlier on. He said there was a link with Sandman, with the Golden Age hero in the Kirby 70s version, and even with the Matt uh, Wagner's 1920s spin off, Sandman Mystery Theater. Because I think there's like touches, was in the first issue, maybe like this, you know, this. Um, this man that goes around, you know, while everyone is in this deep sleep state and, and he goes around, he's got this mask on and he, and he was it like knocks people out with gas. And I think, I think that's what he's referred to that kind of nod there. Um, and then Jobla also says that Gaiman eventually introduces Cain and Abel, uh, the hosts from 1970s horror title house and uh, house of mystery and house of secrets as characters and the three witches from the witch in our book. So this seems like there's a lot of crossover stuff, like a lot of characters, taken from you know dc vertigo stuff and just put into this yeah yeah i mean kane and abel were fantastic yeah i love them well, yeah they were well, great i mean abel was just such a little bitch weren't he <laughs> like he was just terrified <laughs> yeah. of kane i like, yeah. didn't even want to open his present was... <laughs> yeah and uh, and going back to Echidna, he, he says uh, he doesn't think uh, the links to the mainstream DC continuity adds a lot, but the Constantine bit fit perfectly. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like it's slotted in really well. The only thing is about the constant again. I don't know a lot about the character, but I don't think he came across like super, like super powered or whatever his power is in the comic books or whatever his kind of magic is. Yeah. And I don't even think Morpheus knew. He just he just seen him as a human or a mortal man, didn't he? So that was not, not disappointing. But I, I would have thought there could have been something there because I'm and I'm not definite, but I'd, I'd imagine they've done books together since they've had stories together because they're obviously involved yeah, yeah. in magic and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I just think the idea of like Morpheus realizing that he's obviously uh, magic or whatever Constantine is would have been quite good to include, but. Yeah, he should have continued, because Constantine wanted to go with him, like, to hell. That was obvious. Yeah. Like, he should have continued, he should have gone with him, because Co- Constantine mm-hmm. would obviously want to maybe try and get his soul back. And then maybe if he'd helped him get his medallion back, like, he would have seen that he had some real power, and he could have saved him from Dr. D, maybe. I just, I wanted more John Constantine, because yeah, yeah, he too. doesn't. Yeah, he's, an, he's an awesome character. Uh, yeah. Let's just say hi to Firehawk. Sorry, he was late. <laughs> The LCS had back issues for 25 cents. Wow. I'd be late too. Trust me, I'd be late too. <laughs> we forgive you, it's okay. Uh, and uh, Chris uh, says to you, Phil, uh, Phil, you said the same about Hickman. You're not dull and you'll do fine with any comics and don't tell yourself any differently. Oh, That's thanks. Right. Thanks. Thank you. But it's just, it's still game. And like, you know, I'm sure he's got more GCSEs yeah. than I do or O levels, whatever they were back then. Um, uh, yeah, can I just. Oh, sorry, go on. I was, gonna I was say, just speak. gonna go. 
I just wanted to say there was a little something that was a bit underdone in the first issue. Um, I thought it was going to build to something. You had the um, the young girl in that went asleep and didn't wake up. I think she woke up like three times a year, they said. And then you had the young boy that couldn't sleep and he was like a walking zombie. And then you had the other lady who was asleep. But every time she woke up, she forgot where she was and would revert back. I thought once they woke up after Sandman was released, I figured they would be important like there was so much time and so much page page space given to them and they just came to nothing there was just i'll tell you don't forget them <sighs> oh right. okay All right don't forget okay them. see there was a there was a point where morpheus i don't know was it in the hell issue and he was walk. i think it was hell no it could have been hell but Morpheus was walking somewhere and somebody recognized him. He was like, don't forget me or something. He'd, he'd, and I thought it was that, the little uh, the Jamaican boy. Am it's I right? A, no, it's a, um, it's, a, it's a queen of somewhere. And she comes in later in the story as well. All right. Okay. I did yeah. like that everyone sees Sandman as their respective deity. Because yes. even Martian Manhunter sees him completely different as well. It's like he this giant, like, giant like, flaming head. Kind yes. of thing, and that was that was cool. Like it, it is really cool that touch. everyone sees him, you know, as they as they think of him, kind of thing. And yeah. yeah, it's really cool. It was really great. Nice um, little touch. Yeah, I, I wanted to talk about like Neil Gaiman as a writer, to be honest, and and his ability to build a world, and well, multiple worlds, to be honest, because you know he, you know, we were we were on multiple planes here, weren't we? We were we were on Earth. We were. In, in the dream realm we were in hell and stuff like that so it's it, it's it was none of it all well all of it felt natural and you know it, like it fit in and it was all done really well in my opinion and i just that's one reason why i love neil gaiman yeah yeah this world the world building was done um yes it was done a bit heavy-handed because like there was mm. so much of it so soon but I understand he wanted to get it done in the first trade or like the first story arc, so I can forgive him, especially when he builds a world like that. Yeah, the the, the dreams were just um, they were so bizarre. Like there was one, I think it might have been the Scott Free one where he, Granny Goodness was in it and stuff. Like the things that were occurring in these dreams were just really strange. Like it's almost like hard to, yeah. not hard to keep up, but like hard to kick in or something like, you know, and then when, yeah. when the dream ends, I was almost like delighted. Oh, thank God that's over. You know, it's just like, <laughs> not because it was bad. It was just really hard or something. It's just, it was so strange, but it was, it was cool. It was, there's no doubt yeah. it was cool. Um, I think my favorite dream scene was when Dr. D followed Morpheus uh, you know, into the dream to to fight for the for the ruby and stuff, and the, the kind of how you had those what three Asian women and they were talking to him, and then they would change every panel, their appearance would just change every time, and I just thought I was just like, it's really cool how this is, like you know, you need to like nothing tells you in in a plain you know writing that this is a dream, you know what I mean? Like this all needs you to just think a little bit, like. Where are you? Why are you seeing it like this? And yeah, I just love that kind of thought and, you know, the fact that your hand wasn't being held very much through these scenes. Yeah. The, the other one similar to what you're mentioning with the three Asian women is the one with the three witches. Yeah. If you remember that, I think it was early on in issue one or two, where they had, yeah. to, you had, like th you had to ask one question for each yeah. one. And one question, one answer. Answer. Yeah. And I thought that was quite clever the way he'd done it to get this kind of answer. He needed to go get the 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 the, the pouch and stuff, but I, sh I should I, I wanted to include that page as well. It was a page where like they, they keep shifting, like they're almost like shifting, uh, yeah, like bodies, but they, they were the same people because remember there was one eating the frog, yeah, you know, and <laughs> she had the frog, so all the frog, and then burped, yeah. So like I just loved the way they changed it throughout those, those panels. Yeah. I thought it was really cool. I'm I'm glad you spotted that as well because yeah, I love that. Cool. Yeah. It's really good. Uh, Job Lot is popping as well, talking to you, Phil. He says he lost interest in various future story arcs as he didn't get quite a lot of the references. And Gaiman did a lot of stuff with Shakespeare and classical stories that he just didn't understand. So, uh, is he trying to say that uh, you will lose? <laughs> like you will lose to, me and I are on the same are on the same boat. <laughs> like, yeah. You know. Um, but yeah. Anything else on 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 the writing, guys? Um, I do feel it was a little bit dated. Um, 
I don't think it aged very well in a very specific part when you had um, when Doctor D grabbed Rosemary, the woman in the car. Yeah. And like she asks him what's wrong with him, and she assumes it's AIDS because it's the eighties. Yeah. Like today, that would obviously be cancer. Yeah. So like you, it's very very of its time. Um, yeah. That basically, it's you know, it's it's fine. You can overlook yeah. it. You know, just, like, it was, as, as long as you know it's from you know it was yeah. out in eighty in nineteen eighty nine. Then you know you can understand. But you know if yeah. if they try to just re-release it as a brand new thing and still said AIDS, then. It wouldn't work. I wouldn't be Sorry. like, why have you said that? It's just, yeah. it's, it's, it was really odd. Like, the first thing she thinks of is, why do you look like that? It must be AIDS. Like, it is so strange. Like, that's just so odd. Like, obviously, we, we didn't have that time to, that, to say it. So kind of, what's the word? Like, nonchalant or, you know, yeah. it's just so strange. But say just as well before I forget, actually, that the, the issue where they were in the diner and Dr. D was controlling things, like, that was one issue. That could be like a two-hour yeah. horror movie, what occurred yeah. in that diner oh, scene. Yeah. And it was really grim and really odd and strange, but it was dark, obviously. But it was really, it was really good and tense. Like, like I say, if that was a Stephen King novel or something, that would be a movie and be one of those kind of like classic horror movies. It was just so sick and so strange, but needed because yeah. Doctor D was an asshole. Yeah. So yeah, he definitely was. Like after, after Amy and I listened to the audiobook. And like we had that whole, you know, the 24 hour scene. That's like a half an hour scene to listen to. And it's like there's sound effects and like all this kind of like it's just it is gross. Okay. But like, but the, I was trying to speak to her about it. And I was like, like we both, we both enjoyed that bit. And like we, we were trying to say like it was kind of necessarily disgusting. And like it, like, you know, this, this kind of world that Neil Gaiman is trying to make, it needs to be messed up because you know because dreams are being affected because you know morpheus isn't in control of setting this balance so there had to be some sort of unbalance and there was just all this gross stuff happening but it was kind of like you know it wasn't unnecessary it was just yeah that's, that's all yeah, it's, it's been the picture that that obviously morpheus has lost hold of the dream world you know this is what happens when he's not in control yeah yeah, but also it kind of like they were trying to say Doctor D was evil, but we knew he was evil. Like we mm. knew he was. I mean, like when he shoots Rosemary, like he has that lovely, pleasant conversation with her, and they like build this rapport, and so so much so that she just drops him off and thinks she can just drive away, and then he just shoots her in the face. Like so, we mm. knew he was bad. So then to push it to that sort of extreme for an entire issue, yeah, that was. Yeah. The thing is, that issue got me really thinking. So I, I, I slept on that issue and I was just like, right, so if this was to really happen, like, what could you do to, like, protect your family? I was like, I have to lock one kid in this room, lock the door, put the other kid in this room, lock the door. No, like, just, like separate yourselves because if you're not in control of what's happening because yeah, of the yeah. dream, it's just, it's, just, it's just so mental to think about. Like, obviously, it's not going to happen in real life. Yeah. But, like, you know, <laughs> if, if it did, like, what, what could you do? You have no control over it. And the fact that the whole world was infected. Was affected with it as well. It was just yeah. um, job block comics is is here again, uh, saying the level of horror of the diner issue was never reached again in the whole series. Gaiman seemed to veer away from that kind of thing in the future. Um, I want to touch on that too because Firehawk sorry, comes in as well, saying that the diner was very disturbing. Yeah, it was. I got that impression on issue eight that um, they took the horrors bit. The horror has been so we've had, we've had, this is yeah. what happens when I'm not in control. I'm now in control, so he ha now has a new perspective on what he needs to do to kind of control the dreams and stuff, whatever. And obviously, the whole the sister being death, like everything just felt a lot calmer. Like, don't worry, yeah. it's not going to yeah, happen yeah. again. And I think if they went down that road again for a future story arc, it's like it's been done before. So I'm sure there's yeah. different things they've thought of down the line rather than just go yeah. back to the same kind of horror stuff occurring. Like the 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 audiobook, I think it covers the first three volumes, and each story is so different, but not in a bad way. They're all just you know they're all just looking at different perspectives of you know dream and and you know the the dream space and his realm and what he can do and stuff like that. And it's just like it's really interesting to see like how many you know is effectively doing different 
genres in a way you know like the first one was horror and then you have like you know um it's kind of like a romance ish kind of thing and then you know it's it's really cool um and it touches on loads of different stuff um yeah i think i think that's all i I can't, I can't think of anything else to say. You've, you've sold it to me. I'm definitely going to be getting that audiobook now. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Do it. Me too. Do it. Um, I'm going to keep the tradition alive, guys. I'm going to put the glasses on. What What does that mean? Are we ready for our final thoughts and scores? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, guys, you know the score in the chat. If you've read the book, leave your score and we will get the average on there. Uh, but in the meantime, Phil, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, okay, so I deliberately didn't score this before we're done the show live, because sometimes talking it out, you definitely yeah. get a better perspective on the book. Um, At the start of this book, I'm not going to lie, I didn't like it at the start. I didn't, I wasn't looking forward to reading eight issues off it. And it was in the round, it was the John Constantine issue before it started to change a little bit, and it started to get back into the, a little bit more. I think it was actually three, maybe four, maybe. And towards the end i definitely saved it um again talking to you guys now getting a better perspective of just how clever this book is and how much has went into it and the fact that neil again is not just writing the story is kind of carving this whole kind of not even just one world different planes all different worlds and stuff i was like it's just it's so bonkers that it deserves a decent enough score because yeah. it, it's there's a lot to went into it i still find um the Sandman stuff intimidating, like all the stuff going forward, like there's just a lot off it, but I think I'm going to try and read on. I'm not going to buy the only bosses in case I don't, or the absolutes, because yeah. they don't like it. But uh, this issue alone, start off really strange, picked itself up. Art was disturbing and bonkers and everything else. And yeah, um, I'm going to give it a seven. I think a seven's the first score, because I'm still okay. skeptical of how, you know, what it's going to be like going forward and, that's affected my score. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Uh, Shane, over to you. I obviously love the artwork. I, I, as soon as I open the book, because the first thing I do, even before I start reading, I will grab the book and I will go to the first page to see what kind of mindset I need to be in to enjoy the book. Because if I'm not in that mindset, I don't want to pick it up because I don't want to be like unfair on the book. And I was like, oh, this is good. This makes me happy. So I, I enjoyed the art throughout the entire book. The story, I really like the characters, everything from the designs to the way they interacted with each other. And I love the world building. I did think it was a bit, a bit long. Like, I know they were building a massive world. I think reading it monthly would have been a lot better for me. Reading it in one go, mm. it was very heavy. And that's that's fine in a book if you're if you've got the time to read it. But I feel like a week is a bit of a rush to read such a heavy book. But I really enjoyed most of this book. And the final issue was my favourite, hands down. The introduction of death, the just a, just a day in the life of death, and the the title of it as well, like the sound of her wings. It was just like beautiful. Yeah. Overall, this was really I. I'm glad I read it. I would not like I said before, I would never have picked this up. I was never interested in it, but I'm so glad I read it. And I probably will read the next volume to see if it goes up. But for me, yeah. this is a really, really good seven out of 10. Okay, great. Uh, we still got some scores coming in. Um, shall I, shall I wait? Shall I, Keep going. Uh, oh, actually, I think. Do I end this? Mm -mm -mm. I think I've got them all. Okay. Um, so yeah. So I'll do mine, and then we'll do the audience, and then we'll do our overall score. Um, so I I love this. Like you know the the start. You know for starters, it's got Neil Gaiman's name on the front. Um, you know instantly I'm a fan. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is about these kind of dark, twisted deep worlds that he creates and characters that he makes and stuff as well but I, I can't help but just like love everything that he does um you know this this story as a whole I, like I've, I've described it as a fantastical and unnecessary and necessarily horrific story um that has 
pretty much stood the test of time for over 30 years you know for for people you know for us now to get together over it and people in in the comments to say that they still love the book and you know the fact that they you know last year they just released an audiobook this year or next year they're doing the netflix show like it's a highly acclaimed series and i'm like and i'm in you know the art was amazing like i i much preferred the art of the first five issues so that's sam keith's issues over uh, Mike Dringenberg's art, um, but that that you know, I'm not saying Mike Dringenberg's was worse. I just preferred Sam Keith's. So, um, but yeah, you know, the the how dark this got, and you know, and how how it was dealt with, I thought was brilliant. Um, I cannot wait to read more, um, but I, I'm going to be higher than you boys, and uh, for me, it's it's a nine. Ooh. Whoa! So nine out of ten. I love this so much, so so much. Like I cannot wow. wait to read the rest. I've got the deluxe book one on its way. I cannot wait to get more into it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get the rest. Um, I, I was gonna I was gonna say is it not buyer's remorse because you've bought the deluxe book <laughs> and it hasn't arrived yet? So I, I have to give it a nine uh, to justify my purchase. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's fine. Um, okay, so I think we've got all the scores in. Oh, just one more there, right? So, how many do we have? Uh, we also had a score in from Comic Bound as well. He he couldn't make it today, so he sent me a message earlier on, giving his score, and he gave it a nine point five. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a nine point five, a nine, a seven, a nine, a seven point five, a nine, and an eight, um, giving us uh, an audience average of um, eight point four. Oh, good. And uh, with with you boys giving it a seven each, and me giving it a nine. Uh, that brings us to a 7.7. 7. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Personally, I do wish it was higher, but let's take a look That's at what... still pretty what, high. Don't be greedy. Pretty good, yeah. <laughs> maximum <laughs> carnage. Maximum carnage. Ten, ten, ten. Let's see what it's like on the leaderboard, shall we? So, 7.7. 7. It's matching 10th with uh, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. You got top 10, Scott. Well done. We're in the top 10, <laughs> baby. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, lock and key is in the top row. Okay, let's oh, not yeah. uh, let's not oh, forget yeah. that. Um, but yes, uh, that has been it. That has been us talking about um, the Sandman Volume One uh, Preludes and Nocturnes. Uh, next week, uh, we are going to be going ahead and talking about Philip's pick. We're talking about the Silver Surfer Origins from 1968. Oh, I'm right. looking forward. To, I think it's our first Silver Age book, so I'm looking forward to that. I think so. I think so. Yeah, um, yeah. So that'll be good. So, so come come along and join us for that. Uh, the 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 video was already on on YouTube, so you can go ahead and set the reminder for that if you like. Um, let's go around and say what we've got coming up, shall we? On our own channels, uh, Philip, do you want to go first? Yeah, nothing. Okay, cool. Shane? <laughs> yep, nothing. Although <laughs> Phil and I were on This Week in Metropolis. Yeah. Yes. So if we drop yes. the link in the chat, you can head over to their channel and watch us. Or you can check out the podcast if you want to listen. Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. So I'll just put that in the in the chat there now. Yep. So you it was a lot of fun. Two, two, two good fellas talk about comic books. It was just oh, fun. So yeah, check It really out. was. Such great guys. It was so nice to just talk for an hour about fun yeah. stuff <laughs> yeah. i watched it and i loved it and, and, I, and i'm looking forward to being a guest one day um but yeah uh so um before we go guys uh well also sorry on my channel um i've also got nothing immediately coming up but um but we do have comic airwaves coming soon and i have messaged a ton of people about getting involved with the answer um so if you do want to uh, get involved all you gotta do is send me a 30 second clip of you telling me who would win in a fight daredevil or nightwing and tell me why that's so, super yeah. easy I think, I <laughs> yeah daredevil i think it is um but yeah so send me send me a video um and just uh yeah telling me why um but yeah so so that's the end of the show for us but before we go um shane has uh compiled um a, a clip of kind of the four of us, you know, including Dean, um, getting our waves out. Um, so you know, it's it, I think it's a nice way to say to say goodbye to Dean. I have seen a few people in the chat asking where Dean is. I think I think they uh, missed the start. Um, and last week's show, Dean 
uh, has left the nerdhood and 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 the social media kind of side of everything. And uh, like I said earlier, we respect his decision wholly, and we hope he's doing well with whatever he's doing. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and get this video played, and uh, and hope you guys enjoy it. But yeah, we'll be back to say bye after it as well. So stick around. On that note, folks, let's wrap it up as we do with the Sundays we're going to do on the Wednesdays. So I'm going to say get your waves out. And hopefully we will catch you all next Wednesday, folks, for God's Immortal. Let's wrap it up there. <laughs> get your waves out, everyone. And get your waves out, everybody. Get your waves out. <laughs> And all that remains to say is, uh, everybody, get your waves out. Yeehaw! All that remains to be said are two things. One, hashtag shelves should be square. <laughs> and two, shelves be flat. Get your waves out. <laughs> well, on that note, folks, all that remains to do is get your waves out. <laughs> All that remains to do then, as every week, get your waves out. And get your waves out. And all that remains to be said then is, get your Christmas waves out. Oh, Christmas waves. Oh, what's a Christmas waves? Christmas <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and get your waves out. All that remains to do then, folks, is... Get your waves out. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say it. <laughs> do it with peace and love in your heart, folks. So do that. Get your waves out. Bye. Bye. Get your waves out. Get your waves out. Bye, guys. And we'll sign off in our usual and special way, the way we've always done, by saying, get your waves out. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. That means, cool. get your waves out. <laughs> get your waves out. Get your waves out. Get your waves out. Get your waves out. Get your water. I can do it. Bye. Hey, bye. All that remains to do then, folks, is... Scott, do you want to tell people? Uh, yeah, just go. <laughs> Get your waves out. Just launch you. And we'll try this again then. Phil, magic words, please, sir. Bye-bye. <laughs> Get, Get your waves out. <laughs> and... Shane, get your waves out. Uh, Happy birthday, Jane. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Ooh, well, la de da get your waves out. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to do what we always do. And what do we always do, Scott? Get your waves out. And we are going to fill what we're going to do. We're going to get our waves out. And on that note, Shane, what are we going to do? We're going to get your waves out. And Scott, what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and we're going to grab our hands and get our waves out. <laughs> <laughs> and in the meantime, Phil, what are we going to do? I think, I think we're getting our waves out. All right. Get your waves out. Uh, so on that note, Shane, what what will we do? Get your waves out. Got or Phil or everyone. Let's do an everyone. We've not done an everyone. What are we going to do, everyone? No idea. Get, Get your waves out. out. Get it waves out. I am going to say, laggy waves out. <laughs> One more thing to do, isn't it? Just hold. is it written down on the list? Um, well, I'm not sure. Do you know what it is? Oh yeah, it says right here. Hold on, hold on. Ding, ding, press it every week. Get your wheels out. Oh.
what what are we doing? I wasn't here last week. I've, I've forgotten what we do. It's usually around this time, and um, we try and find something to get it out. But uh, you know, what do you, what, what do you want us to get out? Well, I'm, I'm not certainly good. not getting out what you think it is. But I tell you what, I will get out. I'll get my ways out. Hi. So we're gonna do it. Three, two, one. Get your waves, get your waves out. out. <laughs> you know what we're gonna do now, don't you? No, what's that thing? We're gonna get our waves out. Oh, I've lost mine. Yeah. Uh, mine's not here. I'm out. <laughs> oh, here it is. <laughs> right, my- Anything else, folks? Nope. Just one more thing. Just one more thing. Is that it? Get your waves out. Am I jumping the gun? <laughs> nope. <laughs> The waves are coming. On that note, what is it we're supposed to do, folks? Ah, Phil, did you bring yours? Um, hold on. Uh, I've got it I've here. Got... Don't, don't, I'll, I'll, I'll share. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got mine first. <laughs> Get your waves out, folks. <laughs> Get your waves out. I'm just going to make you wave now. I'm just, this is the new ending. I'm just going to make you keep waving and keep waving. All right, if you will just briefly look under your chairs, guys, you will find underneath there a wave. If you could please get that out for me right Tell now. Me. Tell me. I'm just going to make you wave now. Wait, just keep going. You know, it doesn't even matter. We're banned from everywhere now, so it doesn't even matter. Just, 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 just wait. Just keep. Who cares, man? All right. See you next week, guys. So all that leaves me to say, for the final time, is get your waves out. And there we go. That was our little tribute to Dean. Thank you very much, mate. You've been an absolute blast to do this show with. Um, but yeah, you know, Leah Le- Le- Le said here, how many different locations has Scott been in? The, <laughs> <laughs> the, the best thing about that man. tribute video, to, or not the best thing, but the, the, the good thing about that tribute video is that all our COVID haircuts. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's all of our haircuts and all of our, like, our screen names and how our rooms have changed and our backgrounds and stuff. It's and our beards. Crazy. And our beard and your your beard, um, but yeah, but guys, I think there's um there's there's one more thing to do, and I think Phil, if I if I give you mine, you take that. Okay. Uh, yeah, you got that, Shane. You take Shane. this one. Oh wait, no. Yeah, I'll take yours, Shane. Yeah, great, <laughs> cool. And uh, you're just gonna go ahead and uh, get our waves out. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Love you.